Thank you so much for that introduction um, and thank you so much to the organisers for inviting me to be part of this really important um, series of discussions. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the country on which I live, work and play. I'm in North Brisbane and this is the traditional lands of the Yagara and Turrbal peoples. I'd like to acknowledge elders past, present and emerging uh, and also acknowledge the remarkable governance system um, that the first peoples of this continent uh, developed over time and continue to use um, in their amazing caring for country. What I'd like to talk about in my session, I guess, is connected to many of the other talks, but perhaps a slightly different angle too, because while much of the focus for stewardship of country rightly needs to be a focus on our actual impact and actions on the living and the non-human world. One of the things that my organisation, the Australian Earth Laws Alliance, AILA, uh, works on are what we see as the equally important ideas that live beneath our actions, how we think about the living world, our worldview, and how we organise ourselves. Governance is a word that's thrown around a lot. Not everyone even understands what it means. When I talk about governance, what I'm interested in is how, when you get more than a few people in a room together working on something, um, we find ways to understand values, develop rules, institutions, organisational structures, ways of working together. A lot of the work that we do inside AILA is helping people rethink current governance systems, particularly in the Western world, because some of our ideas um, are responsible for the actions that cause great harm to the living world. To put it another way, we're very interested in the ideas that lie beneath the ideas that lie beneath our individual actions and also our societal or collective actions. This little iceberg, um, if you think about the social cultural aspects of consumer culture, the economic um, aspects of consumer capitalism and the legal, political and institutional aspects of modern Australian society, many of the ideas that have forged the systems we live within today are from many hundreds of years of European style or English evolved concepts. Why is that important? I'm going to give three very simplified examples, things we all know about, and I'm sure anyone interested in stewardship of country has already thought about these issues. But what I want to share um, at the end of my overview is some of the work that many groups are working on in Australia to rethink the governance systems that can support more effective stewardship of country. Because in some instances, going out and looking after a patch of land in itself will not be enough to do all of that we need to do to love and care for the living world. We need in many places deep systems change and understanding the system we have now is often a nice way to think about that. So please forgive me for the simplification of these examples, but they're ways for us as Australians to think about um, these ideas that lie beneath. So the first example is of course, modern Australian society. And if we think about the history of modern Australian society, perhaps as starting in 1788, when the British empire claimed first the New South Wales colony and other colonies that then became states and then forged the federal government structure that we have today, then the history of European conquering or invasion or settlement of the continent is also the history of Western ideas coming to this ancient land. That's stating the obvious, but what do I really mean? When you look at the divisions between the colonies or the states of Australia, you see these very firm straight lines. When you think about the political system of the Australian governments that we have, we have a particular form of representative democracy. When you think about the institutions and the ideas that make decisions within this modern nation state, we are very much driven by a narrow realm of value, often um, what people would call neoliberal economics or market-based economics. So this map in itself represents a whole range of ideas that have forged the kind of practices that we have not just allowed, but really been positively supportive of. Land clearing, extractivism, mining, the ideas that lie beneath have driven these actions. And this is one simple map to show that the ideas that lie beneath have had a huge impact on governance and the activities that we allow 
In a longer presentation, I often show that this change of vegetation uh, coverage across Australia is in direct parallel with the wheat belts and agricultural practices that came to the continent with the British Empire. So it's just a very vivid example. All of the white is where all the pre previously existing vegetation is gone. And this is a very vivid example of how governance practices, these straight lines that we think with, have had an impact on our economic thinking and what we think is perfectly normal in our worldview. Of course, if we look pre-1788, and I know that Mary Graham probably gave a fantastic talk about the stewardship of country, the relationist ethos, and the really ancient governance system and advanced civilization of communities that were bioregionally located, situated deeply in place, and their worldview was absolutely committed to um, a regenerative, what we would call today perhaps a steady state economic system, a culture that could see the practicalities and the spirituality of caring for country and ensuring that places continued indefinitely forever, both through love and through very good practical care. So in the 21st century, where does that leave modern civilization? Where does that leave mainstream Australian society? What do we do? In the work we do within AILA, we have um, you know, a really steady stream up to dozens and dozens every year of young volunteers multidisciplinary coming in saying, how do we change the system? How do we care for Australia better? How do the Western constructs we're born with and that seem to dominate the landscape, how do we loosen those up? How do we put the weeds through the concrete and rethink how modern society lives in this continent? The reason I bring this map up, I'm sure everyone's familiar with it, these are the 89 recognised mostly by Western scientists, bioregions of this continent. And sometimes this thinking exercise is a really good way for people to really value a rethink of what we expect from Mother Nature on this continent. The bioregions themselves are really just Western science saying, this is how Mother Nature defines herself in these places. From the geology up, these places are different from the places next door or the places further north or further south. Within the 89 bioregions, current Western science is looking at about 415 or 418 sub-regions. And of course, what's fascinating and interesting is Western scientists have developed some of these ways of looking at the Australian continent. And it's very similar to how the ancient cultures on this place, the ancient peoples and their governance systems reflected the reality of life. And what I'm interested in as a modern lawyer thinking about earth-centered governance is to support the people who are out there on the ground trying to care for soils, trying to reforest or revegetate or do agriculture differently, what is it that we can change inside the way we think, these ideas that lie beneath, that can support a transformative way of connecting to place and to connecting to the Australian continent? Certainly, we've got all these modern concepts now in our 21st century, planetary boundaries, remarkable work by our own Will Steffen from Australia, Johan Rockström and others about the upper ceiling of ecological health, how the planet has got this system working. Earth system science tells us the entire system is connected and it's something we need to learn about because we've already breached some of these safe operating space boundaries for planet Earth. And equally, we're seeing a real rise in the other work that I do with the New Economy Network in Australia, a rise in people craving a new economic system Donut economics is being explored by cities and communities around the world, and it's been framed by Kate Raworth as a way to live within our ecological upper ceiling, the limits, whilst also ensuring social justice for all. And our challenge for the kinds of work that we're doing here in Australia is how do we rethink those straight lines? How do we create a governance system that is different, that respects and acknowledges and co-creates the reaffirmation of First Nations sovereignty in this nation, whilst also aiming to build very different ways of doing and being for non-Indigenous people. It's not just about land use. It is about stewardship of country, but stewardship of country also means where do we get our products from? Where do we import, make, use and dispose of modern wastes? Um, I think rethinking the governance system um, is deeply important and some of the work we do inside our Green Prince initiative is helping people think about, I guess, some core aspects of if we want to rethink and be regenerative and care for country, then we have to think about ecological limits. 
bioregions are a wonderful practical starting point for that. Whatever cultural or other lens you end up putting on your land care, thinking about, um, particularly from a Western point of view, actually engaging with the uniqueness of place and thinking about how we should change our systems to fit within those uniqueness of place is a very good way to start. Ecological limits, uniqueness of place, what Mary Graham refers to as the relationist ethos. If these were a starting point for rethinking our governance, I think we would end up with a very different looking society. And I think we're on our way. Um, at my age, I've watched the emergence of sustainability in the 1980s and 1990s, the excitement that came with these notions um, that still were largely flawed because they were all about balancing ecology, economy and society. And now what I'm seeing in the 21st century, highlighted by donut economics, um, is this idea that we must change what we do to be regenerative, to care for country and to do it within um, the living limits of, of our natural systems. So as a way to wrap up, I guess I would just give a little plug to Green Prince because what Ayla is doing is working with a wide range of people, our Indigenous colleagues in the organisation Future Dreaming and everyone from scientists, economists, people who are interested in the ecological economics realm of uh, material flows, to really just look at a bioregional perspective, what's going on in a place, how we can rethink our economic systems, how we can transition actual economic activities in place that can sustain human activities, ensure a thriving human society, but doing it in a way that is both culturally and ecologically appropriate um, to its place and to the neighbours. And then finally, as the lawyer, I can't help but say part of our dream with Green Prince is to actually show um, a redesigned legal system, not some kind of tragic um, revolutionary idea that changes everything, but tweaks around the edges. Um, and we've got a team of lawyers actually looking at which parts of a state, state legal system could be changed to give greater say to uh, local people caring for country and caring uh, for the plants and animals that they're stewards of. Um, so I think that's really all I wanted to say is that for uh, the work that we do as lawyers and governance folks connected to many people across different disciplines, including land carers, wildlife carers, there's only so far we can go with just caring for the land and the places around us. Complete systems change is desirable and it is doable, um, but there's also a lot of stuff to be thinking about. And if anyone's interested in some of the work we do, we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much.